So, here's the scenario. You got a printer. It's a nice printer, but you have some qualms with it. Maybe it's a Bowden and you want to upgrade to a direct drive. Maybe the extruder is too heavy and you want to upgrade to something lighter like this fancy schmancy Orbiter V2 from LDO. So, you've installed your new extruder, you can't wait to use it, you load up that bench, you start printing, and to your horror, it's a mess of over-extrusion. Congratulations, you are about to enter the exciting world of extrusion steps and rotation distance. I shake you warmly by the hand. Extruders can be different, motors can be different, gearing can be different. Your firmware, you better believe that's different. All printers need to extrude filament at the correct rate for best quality. And for Marlin, that setting is called E-Steps, and for Clipper, that is called Rotation Distance. The mechanics behind this also play a part in every motor system on your printer. So for the X, the Y, the Z, but most commonly, this is done with the extruder. I'm sure a lot of you are quite familiar with E-Steps on Marlin, but if you're not, this video is for you. And if you have a Clipper printer and you want to know how to do the same thing with that, and stay tuned, we're also going to talk about that. So, Marlin printers up first, and I am using Pronterface to interface with my printer via USB. It's not entirely essential that you use this, but uh, for more modern, faster printers, I would recommend it. The reason being, you should keep the extrusion speed low for your tests for better accuracy. You can do this on a printer screen, however, there is no option to control the speed on pretty much every printer screen. So, if we're using Pronterface, we can actually use a console command to tell the printer to extrude slowly. The other reason is that printers have a minimum hot end temperature in order to engage the extruder motor. So if your nozzle temperature is 170 degrees or lower, then the extruder motor just won't engage. In order to get around this, you would have to turn the hot end on to normal printing temperature and then do the test. But if you're using Pronterface, you can use an M302P1 command to enable cold extrusion so you don't have to turn on the hot end for this test. So first thing we want to do is to extrude 100 millimeters of filament and see if it actually does extrude 100 millimeters of filament. So let's make a mark on this filament about 120 millimeters from the extruder. And now we can get onto Pronterface and send it a G1 command. This is the basic move command on Marlin and we can also say E100 which tells the extruder to move 100 millimeters. You can also add F60 at the end of that command to tell the extruder to extrude at a speed of 60 millimeters per minute. So G-code normally responds to millimeters per minute instead of millimeters per second, like on slicers. So it's extruding nice and slowly, and when it is done, we can measure it, making sure it is straight against the ruler. And if your extruder is working well, it should have extruded 100 millimeters. I would actually recommend using a caliper to measure this. You can with a ruler or a measuring tape, but this is just more accurate. By the way, that is if you're using a direct drive printer. If you're using a Bowden like this Ender 3, the best idea is actually just to remove the pneumatic coupling at the extruder. And this will be your starting point. You can just clip it at the end and then you can extrude and measure hopefully 100 millimeters. Let's say we put a new extruder on this, no settings changes at all. We did the test and we got 150 millimeters instead of 100 millimeters. Well, that's some serious over extrusion, but it's pretty easy to change this so that it works. We can adjust this with a simple calculation. That being the current steps per millimeter value multiplied by the length of the filament that should have extruded equals the steps taken for that move. The first value is what your current E-steps value is on your printer. Now you might know this already, but an easy way to find out is just go to Pronterface and use an M92 command. And this will give you the steps for all of your motors. The E is the one for your extruder. The second value we know, we've just measured it, it's 150 millimeters. And the third value is what we need. This is the amount of steps that were actually used by the stepper motor to extrude this 150 millimeters of filament. Now we have to use another formula. The steps taken divided by the actual length extruded equals the new steps per millimeter value. The first value and the second value we know. The first was the one that we just calculated and the second was the one that we measured, which is 150 millimeters. The third value will give us our new correct E-steps value. You can also just merge both formulas to make a general one that you can use in one go. That being the current steps per millimeter value multiplied by the length of the film that should have extruded divided by the actual length that was extruded. This equals the new steps per millimeter value. To change your current E-steps value, just go back into Pronterface and give it an M92 command, but this time with an E and your new E-steps value. 
So if my E steps value now was 120, I would type in M92 E120. That's it. That's basically it. Afterwards, you can go back into Brandeface and type in M500 and this saves all of your settings. But if you use the M302 command before to enable cold extrusion, then you need to set this back by saying M302P0. And this will disable cold extrusion and you can use the M500 command and all will be done. However, you can also add the M92 command in your start G code for your slicer. So just put in M92 E120 or whatever your step value is, and it will remember it each time you slice a file. As was mentioned before, this applies to basically every motor system on the printer. So you can use the same formulas for your X, Y, and Z. This is probably only relevant if you are building a new printer. Apart from that, it would only be necessary if you were to change parts of the hardware, like the gearing, uh, the lead screw, but I've never ever heard of someone changing from a T8 lead screw to something else. So it's probably not going to happen. So that is Marlin out of the way. What about clipper printers? Well, actually it's very, very similar, but there is a terminology difference. So instead of saying E steps, we say rotation distance, and there is a difference. The difference between rotation distance and E steps is that for clipper rotation distance is how much an axis moves when the actual motor is rotated one revolution. Whereas with E-steps, it is how many steps are taken by a motor to move one millimeter on that axis. So with Clipper, it's not really representative of how many steps are in a motor. That is set separately. And if we look at your average CFG file for a Clipper printer, we see rotation distance and underneath we see full steps for a rotation. For most stepper motors, 200 is default. However, recently we're seeing a lot more extruder motors with a 0.9 degree step instead of the more common 1.8 degree. So if you were to upgrade your printer to a 0.9 degree step motor, then you would have to double that value to 400, but you wouldn't have to change the rotation distance. However, if you were doing this with a Marlin printer, you would need to double the E-steps. The formula used to calibrate rotation distance for Clipper is actually very, very similar to the E-steps one, just with several values in different places. However, the test is exactly the same. Here's the formula. Rotation distance equals previous rotation distance by the actual length that was extruded divided by the length of filament that should have been extruded. You might also notice that in the CFG, there is a value called micro steps, and this here is set to 16. So microstepping is exactly what it sounds. Instead of moving the motor one step, which is 0.9 or 1.8 degrees, depending on your motor, you would move it in smaller increments. So if the value is 16, that means you move 16 microsteps for each full step. The main advantage of microstepping is smoother movement. If you were to double the microstepping value from 16 to 32 in Clipper firmware, you wouldn't actually need to change the Clipper rotation distance at all. These are discrete values, they're independent of each other. But if you were doing this in Marlin firmware, then you would need to double the E-steps if going from 16 to 32. So here ends your quick guide on Marlin E-steps and Clipper rotation distance. If you guys have any questions, then please feel free to leave a comment below or send us an email. And if you guys like this video, then click on that like button or maybe even click on that subscribe button. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.